This is a slow flow, but very powerful yoga practice for your follicular phase. This practice is designed to support that energy of the inner spring. So we're awakening from the depths of our winter in the cycle, the menstrual phase, and we're sort of slowly coming to life. So I like to use this practice in the first few days after uh, flow subsides and you're starting to feel that energy kind of stir on under the surface. Maybe you're not ready for something very quick or very intense, but you want to slowly build in intensity. So this practice will do that for you. It is a practice focusing on shoulder mobility and strength. So we are going to work the full range of motion in the shoulder joints, as well as some in the hips with a focus on developing strength in those wider ranges of motion. So we're working a lot with dolphin, with downward dog, with side plank, these positions that demand a lot of strength and mobility from the shoulders. With that being said, please honor where you are in your practice. So really listening to those signals from the body that help you stay kind of at your intelligent edge. So that place where you feel a challenge, but it is safe. You are within this safe container of practice and you can continue to grow at your own pace. This is a long form practice. So it's complete from start to finish. It's one to use when you're wanting to drop into a moving meditation, when you have some more space and time for your yoga practice. Use this one to connect with your breath, to kind of open the pathways in your mind and body for what is possible in this cycle. So really creating that energy, that enthusiasm that comes with the spring season to help cultivate and nourish your goals for what lies ahead. So let's get started with our yoga practice. Let's begin our practice today in a comfortable child's pose. Let your big toes come to touch. If it's comfortable, let your knees be wide apart. Let them be wide enough apart that you have space for the belly, but close enough together that your outer ribs are supported. Let your forehead rest on your hands. Take a few moments here to connect with your breath. Let your body and your mind arrive. So start to feel that coherence that comes when you allow your attention to rest on what's happening now. Breathe in and out through the nose, start to feel some sound echo between your body and your mat. And as we prepare for this practice that encourages us to emerge from that restful darkness in the menstrual phase of winter, start to call in the essence of spring, which is this inner virya, or in Sanskrit, that's vitality, enthusiasm, effort. How can you create the essence of this season in your practice? It starts with the breath. It starts with your intention. This is a time where we feel a burgeoning energy that allows us to increase the vigor of the practice. And so we'll begin in that way today, slowly awakening and building heat and energy. As you're ready, rise up into a tabletop. Let your knees come to hips width distance and just... Notice how your body wants to move. So do you naturally start to sway your hips or round the back? Do you start to create these waves of energy as your body awakens? So just be in that rhythm for a few breaths, maybe even closing the eyes. And then as you're ready, let your shoulders come directly over your wrists. Hips are over the knees. We're going to move into some mobility in the shoulder blades to prepare us for lots of shoulder awakening in this practice. So rather than cat and cow, I want you to imagine just dropping the torso down and plugging the heads of the arm bones in. So it's not a squeeze of the shoulder blades, but instead you're allowing them to come closer together so that you can soften the ribs down. And then as you exhale, press into the hands, broaden the, coll- the shoulder blades apart, to create space across the back of the heart, but without rounding. 
And then as you inhale, lower down. So notice the tremendous range of motion available to you in the shoulder. Press up, broaden the shoulder blades apart. So as you depress the upper body between the heads of the arm bones, the shoulder blades draw together. And then as you let the, the upper body rise up, the shoulder blades broaden apart. Come back to a neutral spine here. Let Feel that head of the arm bone plug in so you know that your arms are integrated into the shoulders. And from here, cat and cow. So as you inhale, soften the belly, ripple up the spine, gaze up, shine your sitting bones back. Then as you exhale from the sitting bones, round in, curl the spine, chin to chest, press through the upper back. Twice more, inhale, broaden, open, create space along the front line of the body. And then as you exhale, round, curl in, draw your awareness, your energy inward. Last one here, inhale. And exhale. Coming back to a neutral spine now, begin to walk your hands out a bit so that your wrists are ahead of your shoulders. And we'll start to swim the dolphin. So with your inhale, let your forearms lower down and notice there's a rotation that has to happen so that the heads of the arm bones stay externally rotated. So we inhale here, tuck your toes. Exhale, lift the knees up any amount into some variation of dolphin. So not your fullest expression quite yet just a little bit of a lift and stretch for the shoulders as you inhale let the knees touch down and as you exhale press the forearms up elbows rise on the exhale now let the elbows come down tuck your toes under inhale breath lift the hips lift the knees stay for the exhale here inhale knees touch down exhale elbows rise Big breath in here, and exhale, elbows touch down. With the toes tucked under, inhale, lift your hips, lift your knees, stay for the exhale breath. And then as you inhale, knees touch down, exhale, elbows lift. And so just noticing how that feels after a bit of movement in the shoulders here, maybe rocking forward and back on the knees. And then slowly come forward, lower all the way onto your belly. Let your forearms touch down to the mat for Sphinx Pose. So here the hip points stay grounded. Create some activation in your legs by sending the toes back and then pressing into the tops of the feet, tops of the shins, thighs. Let your forearms root down into the mat and drag them energetically back so you feel this awakening across the front side of the body. Notice if your shoulders are shrugging, can you soften them away from the ears? Allow your head and neck to roll one direction and then the other. From here, we'll begin to wake up the core. So I want you to keep your lower legs grounded. So knees to the tops of the feet grounded on the mat. And then as you exhale, draw the hip points and the low ribs together, round into the spine to lift. Feel that engagement, that fire in the belly. Inhale, release, extend the spine. And then as you exhale, knees stay grounded, but round in, lift up through the belly. Draw the hip points and low ribs toward each other. As you do that, can you send the heart forward? Release the hips down. Inhale. Let's do one more. As you exhale, round. Create strength. Power in the belly. Round. You might even feel a bit of a tremble here. And slowly release. Shake it out a bit. Let your left forearm turn so that it's parallel to the short edge of your mat. From here, start to bend your right knee. Hug the inner knees toward each other so that you feel that alignment, that parallel alignment in the legs. And then reach your arm out to the side. Find the outer edge of your right foot. Don't worry if it doesn't connect. You can create that intentionality, that direction. If you have the clasp, begin to press your foot into your hand, your hand into your foot, and then try to square the shoulders. So can this be at once about opening the front of the legs and at the same time stretching the right shoulder. Slowly release down. Pillow your hands. Rest your forehead for a moment. Notice the difference you might feel from one side to the other. Sway your hips side to side. 
And then coming into the second side here, right forearm parallel to the short edge of the mat. Bend into your left knee, hug the inner knees together, and then reach your left hand for your outer left foot. You might notice right away one side a bit more challenging than the other. For me, it's this side. So where can you create some balance here? Press your foot into your hand, your hand into your foot, and let the head and neck be neutral. So avoid the temptation to crane the neck and look up. Instead, let it stay nice and neutral. Last big breath. And release, pillow the hands. Sway the hips. We'll enjoy one more shoulder opener here before we get, begin to flow. Let your right arm extend out to the side. So we'll create a bit more space here. So palm faces down, right arm out to the side, and then begin to roll onto your right side waist. Let your right ear rest on the mat and use your left fingertips to press down and facilitate this rotation into a deep shoulder opener, scorpion position here. So really allowing the body to soften and to be heavy so that you can create that gravity onto the right shoulder. Create some space across the chest. Coming back through center onto the belly. Exchange sides, so now the left arm comes out to the side, palm presses down. And in your own way, start to roll onto the left side body. Right toes touch behind you. Left fingertips spider up to create some rotation here. You can play with the position of that left palm, maybe walking it up or down a bit, maybe pressing into the palm to facilitate a deeper stretch. And then as you're ready, coming back through center, let your knees stay grounded on the earth. Slowly press up into tabletop. And then in your own way, unfold into downward facing dog. Pedal out the feet. You can send your neck from side to side. Rotate the gaze. Just feel this first real entry into downward dog. Wrap the heads of the arm bones forward in space towards your ears. And then move the shoulder blades along the spine toward the hips. Let the crown of the head be a natural extension of the spine. And just to create that that opening in the back. Can you lift your heels high, bend your knees deeply, bring your belly toward your thighs. Keep that now as you start to add more to the pose. So maybe your heels start to root down, maybe your legs straighten first. The priority here in Downward Dog is to create space in the spine and shoulders. As you're ready, step your feet to touch, your big toes to touch. Lift your heels high up off the mat. Begin to roll onto the outer edge of right foot, come onto your right hand, and slowly open in side plank. This is my preferred entry to side plank. It gives us a little bit better alignment in the supporting shoulder. So you wanna have your 90 degree bend between your arm and the rest of your body, rather than between your wrist and the floor. So a lot of times you'll hear shoulder over wrist, but that puts a lot of strain and load in the shoulder in a way that it's not really designed to do. From here, reach your left arm overhead. As you exhale, hug that left knee to left shoulder, create some strength. Inhale, open, nice and slow as though you were moving through water. Exhale, knee to elbow. Start to feel that heat building as you awaken the body here in flow and release. Come back through center, find your downward dog. Reset, recalibrate, find your baseline. And then we'll move to the second side. So as you inhale, lift the heels. Come onto the outer edge of left foot. Rotate onto the left hand, right arm overhead. So really reaching through the right fingertips, finding that strength in the underside of the body here. Big inhale. And as you exhale, knee to elbow, inhale, reach. So find your full range of motion here in shoulders and hips, exhale, knee to elbow. Really press through that bottom foot to feel some lift, to really arc the side waist. 
and come back down. Slowly roll back through downward facing dog. Enjoy a breath or two here. And then we'll start to add on to our flow. Let the left heel stay grounded. Inhale, stretch your right leg up and back. With an exhale, open that right hip. Let your right heel hug to your right sitting bone. But can you square the shoulders? Inhale, re-extend the right leg, square the hips. Exhale, step your right foot through between your hands. Lower the back heel flat in preparation for warrior one. So really take some time to set up your foundation here. That's kind of what the follicular phase is about. We lay this strong groundwork so that we can have an empowered cycle. Your back foot about 45 degrees. You can have the heels in a straight line or maybe a bit wider to create more space in the hips. And as you're ready, rise in warrior one. Feel that deep bend in the front knee. Really root down through the back heel. If you can, square the torso to the front so that's this amazing mobility in the spine that we can move the upper body and the lower body independently. Reach the arms overhead, big inhale. As you exhale, create a cactus shape in the elbows. So the elbows come out wide to the height of the shoulders and then offer the, the heart forward and up. Big breath here. Notice if you're flaring the low ribs, can you integrate the belly by drawing hip points and low ribs together? Big breath here. And as you exhale, turn the hands down. Feel that mobility, that internal rotation in the shoulders. And then take either opposite wrists or opposite elbows behind you. You might even find reverse namaste, reverse prayer. Just this bit of shoulder opening to offer that space to the heart here. Feel the strength in the front leg. And then slowly release, inhale, warrior one. And as you exhale, hands touch down. Step your right foot back into plank, our first vinyasa of this practice. We'll take it nice and slow as you inhale, shift forward onto the toes, lower all the way to the belly. Keep your hands by your shoulders, draw your elbows in, hips stay grounded, inhale, cobra pose. So the heart and chest lift, the neck is neutral, really feeling the rivers of the spine activate here. Lower back down. Tuck the toes. Keep your knees grounded. Inhale, plank. Exhale, downward dog. So we've completed our first side. Between sides, we'll create a bit of action for the belly and the shoulders here. Come forward into your plank pose once again. Shoulders are over the wrists. And from here, we'll lower into forearm plank. So I want you to draw the low ribs and hip points together. Imagine magnetizing the heels of your hands and the ball mounds of your feet. Keep that engagement in the belly. Lower one elbow, one forearm to the other. Find forearm plank. Be here for a breath. And then from the same side, press that hand up. Keep your shoulders and hips level so you're keeping the work in the arms here. And then we'll switch sides so the left arm comes down, right arm comes down. So rather than tipping the hips to make that movement, that transition happen, can you strengthen the arms? So bring your left hand down, press up, right hand comes into plank. We'll move a bit more quickly now here with breath. So as you inhale, come down. As you exhale, press up. Inhale, lower. Exhale, press up. Switching sides as you go. <sighs> Keeping shoulders and hips as square as you can. Creating a bit of heat. Maybe you feel your heart rate elevate. <sighs> Last one, each side. So we go to the right. <sighs> and the left. Next time you're in plank, pause here. Slowly shift back into downward facing dog. Just notice how that feels, that bit of power and quickness. Now coming back into the flow. Let your right heel root down. Inhale, stretch your left leg high. Bend the left knee, hug left heel to sitting bone to open the hip. Square the shoulders, feel rotation in the spine. Re-extend left leg on the inhale, reach back. And as you exhale, step your left foot through between your hands. 
Back heel turns flat, preparing for warrior one. So that deep bend in the front knee, that anchoring in the back heel. Slowly rise as you're ready. Arms reach up. Create separation between the thigh bones. Square the shoulders to the front. Big inhale. And as you exhale, bend the elbows out to that cactus shape. Really feel the expansion across the chest. And with your next exhale breath, turn the palms down, the fingertips down. Feel internal rotation in the shoulder. So we're working on that full range in the shoulder. And then take either opposite wrists, opposite elbows, or reverse prayer. So use that support in the low back. Maybe lift up into a gentle back bend now that you have your low spine supported with your arms. Last big breath here. And as you're ready, arms reach, inhale, warrior one. Exhale, hands touch down. Inhale, plank pose. And as you exhale, lower all the way to the belly. We'll build upward dog now from the ground up. You can always stay with cobra if you want to keep the hips down. For upward dog, tops of the feet press down. Activate the legs, stretch them back behind you. Roll the shoulders open and then press up into the hands. Drag them back to lift the heart. So in upward dog, the only points of contact are the hands and the tops of the feet. So we're activating the legs, stretching them back, lengthening the low spine, and then rippling back up through the heart. Exhale, downward facing dog, rolling over the toes, finding your breath here, connecting, bending the knees deeply, and then re-extending the legs. As you're ready, big toes touch. Lift the heels high up off the mat. Come back into side plank. Come onto the right edge, outer edge of the right foot. Right arm stays down. Reach that left arm overhead. This time, touch your left toes behind your right knee. So I want you to stay in that lateral plane. Hips stay stacked. But we're doing, we're preparing for that transition to wild thing. So here we're staying in kind of a supported side plank, and then we'll add some flow. So as you inhale, lower the right hip down, offer the left, hip, left arm out. And then as you exhale, arc back up through the side waist and come up. So as you inhale, lower, maybe gaze over your left fingertips, and exhale, press up. Create that arc in the spine. Last one here, lower down, and press up. Side plank, or wild thing prep here as you really press through the ball mound of the left foot and then slowly take that left hand down, transition back through downward dog. We'll move to the second side in a moment. So really just give yourself whatever you need to reset for the second side. Big toes touch, heels lift high off the mat. Come on to the outer edge of left foot now, stacking the hips, stacking the shoulders. Right arm stretches overhead. Step your right toes behind your left knee. Create that deep arc in the underside, so the left side waist. And then as you're ready, inhale, lower the left hip, right arm, any amount, and exhale. Track that arc through the sky. Inhale, lower down, and exhale, press up. Last one here, control the descent as you lower. So we're really creating mobility in that supporting shoulder here. So strength through the full range of motion. And then transitioning back to downward dog. Take a breath or two here. If you need to, you can always come down onto the knees, rest the shoulders for a moment. And then only when you're ready, Root down through the left heel, right leg stretches up and back, inhale. Open the hip once again, right heel to right sitting bone. And then we'll create an arc with that right knee. So coming out and around to the right elbow as you exhale, core plank. Out, around, and up, back into one-legged dog. Exhale, come out and around, gather strength in core plank. Last one here, inhale, and exhale. So full range of motion in the hip. As you inhale, come back up, 
Re-extend the right leg, square the hips, and step your right foot through between your hands. Back heel turns flat once again for warrior one. Stretch your heart forward, feel separation between the thigh bones, and slowly rise, arms overhead. In this round, we will interlace the fingers behind you, find yoga mudra. If that's not available, you can always stick with opposite wrists. And then hug the elbows in toward each other. Draw the low ribs and hip points together. And any amount begin to straighten the arms. Feel that space, that stretch across the chest, across the heart. Big breath in here. Maybe start to open in a back bend. Keep sending the right shin forward, left heel anchors back. And then start to coil through the belly. Keep your spine long and bow forward to the inside of your right knee for humble warrior. So now the arms, the hands stretch up towards the sky. We round the crown of the head to the inside of your right foot. Keep that stability in the base, strong legs here. And then slowly coming out. Release your arms. You should feel a buoyancy in the arms now as we release the bind or your one. And as you exhale, hands touch down. Come on to the ball of the back foot. Inhale, plank pose. And then your vinyasa here. So either straight back to downward dog or you can lower all the way down to the belly or maybe pause in chaturanga to create that transition to your back bend. Either hips and legs elevate in upward dog or the hips are grounded in cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Pause for a breath or two here. On your inhale, lower your knees to the mat. We'll start to add on to our forearm plank here between sides, so the forearms touch down. Wrap the shoulder blades onto the heart and then move the heads of the arm bones into the shoulder. So that same action we did in tabletop, drop the chest so that the heads of the arm bones are plugged in and then externally rotate the upper arm bones so your, your shoulders stay broad and open here. Begin to step into forearm plank. So draw hip points and low ribs together. Extend your chest and heart forward. Try not to shrug the shoulders here. And then we'll start to walk it out. So with your inhale, walk the feet in as close as they'll go. Feel that stretch in the shoulders. And then as you exhale, walk it back out to forearm plank. Feel the integration in the belly as you lock into place. Inhale, walk forward. Coming into dolphin. And then exhale, walking back. Unravel the spine. Last two times here, inhale, walk forward. Let's really press the heart through the upper arm bones and then lower into forearm plank. Last one, walk the hands in, press down through the forearms, stretch the heart back towards the thighs and forearm plank once again, unraveling the spine, feeling that strength in the front line of the body. Lower your knees to the earth. Slowly come back up onto the hands. Start to feel that heat. Tuck the toes under. Unfold into downward dog. Coming into our second side now. Let the right heel root down. Inhale, left leg extends. Bend the left knee. Open the hip, hugging left heel to sitting bone. Square the shoulders to the front. And we'll arc through with that left knee. So take a big inhale here. And then as you exhale, come around and down, tap the left elbow, maybe left armpit. Inhale, reopen. And exhale, around and forward. <laughs> Feel the belly engaged last time here. And come forward. Back up through center here, re-extend the left leg. And as you're ready, step your left foot through between your hands. Back heel touches down. Set up the legs for warrior one. On your inhale, rise. Find warrior one. Arms reach. Create that, that rotation in the upper body so it's moving towards square with the front. And then as you're ready, interlacing the fingers behind you, feel that connection across the back line of the body. Hug elbows in, but keep the low ribs and hip points magnetizing together. As you're ready, stretch the arms straight and strong. Reach the knuckles toward the earth. 
Feel that stretch across the shoulders. Tiny back bend here if it feels good. And then begin to coil in the low belly. So feel that activation and slide the heart down and forward. Once you find your full extension, then you might begin to round in, take the crown toward your left heel, stretch your knuckles up toward the sky. Keep that back leg strong. It's your stabilizing force here. Belly drawing in, crown of the head sinking down. Let your left hip crease be heavy. And then slowly from the ground up, begin to rise. Inhale, arms reach, warrior one. Exhale, hands touch down. Inhale, plank pose. Stretch in both directions. Exhale, your vinyasa coming down through your low push-up, maybe rolling over the toes, straight into upward dog and downward dog. Big breath in. Slow breath out. Let the big toes touch. Lift high onto the heels, onto the toes, so the heels lift high. And then shift onto the outer edge of right foot, come into side plank. Left arm reaches overhead, this time enjoying full wild thing. So step your left foot behind your right knee, maybe a bit more separation now. And then as you hug the head of the right heart arm bone into the shoulder socket, can you begin to open the heart and wild thing? So it's this conscious rotation. Keep that shoulder integrated and the left arm reaches up. This might be a lot for your shoulders, for your hips, for your spine. So you might stay here. If you want to add on, keep the heart and hips facing up. And then as you exhale, lower the hips down, reach your left arm towards the back. So you're now sitting facing the back. Inhale, come up, find your wild thing. And as you exhale, slow lower down. Requires tremendous mobility, tremendous range in that right shoulder. Last one here, and lower down. As you inhale, come back through side plank, slowly transitioning back to the lateral plane, stacking hips and shoulders, and downward dog once again. Pedal out the feet, shake out your wrists if you need to. And then we'll step the feet together, moving to the second side now. Lift the heels high up off the mat. Stack your hips, stop your sh stack your shoulders, find side plank. Right arm stretches overhead. Step your right toes behind you. This, maybe they come off the mat to create more space. And then with that left arm plugged into the shoulder, can you slowly open the chest and heart skyward? Rotate the hips toward the sky. Wild thing. You can stay here or as you're ready, inhale, lower down, touch the sitting bones to the earth, and then reopen. So find that arc, that back bend all the way through. Slowly lower, bone by bone, the spine comes upright. And then as you exhale, press up. Last one here, inhale. Gently lower down, offer that right arm forward. Feel the spine lifting, spacious, and then your fullest expression. Wild thing here. Maybe you bring your right hand to your heart. Press your heart into that hand. Maybe start to open the gaze, the chin. And slowly coming out, stacking the hips, stacking the shoulders, and coming into downward dog. Pedal out the feet here. We have one more working wave. As you're ready, right leg lifts. Start to bend the right knee, open that hip. Exhale, take your right knee to the outer right elbow, armpit. Inhale, open up. And exhale, tap. Last one here, inhale. And as you exhale, you have the option now to come forward, create that connection knee to elbow. Maybe lower the elbows, bend them any amount. And you might start to float that back leg up. Coming back out when you're ready, extend the right leg up. So that option one for a deeply established practice. Don't sweat it if your, fo your foot doesn't float off the mat today. Exhale, step your right foot through between your hands. Back heel turns flat, warrior one. Reach up, inhale. 
On your exhale this time, wrap your left arm under right, find eagle arms. So if you don't have the full wrap here, you can always take opposite shoulders or even bring backs of the hands together. Create some space across the back of the heart. Draw low ribs and hip points together. Take your thumbs to your forehead, lift your forehead, your gaze, your arms up. Feel that awakening, that opening in the back. And then as you exhale, shift forward, stretch your fingertips forward, come onto the ball of the back foot. Transition through warrior three, lift that back leg up, square the hips, square the shoulders. Nice and slowly hug left knee into chest. Eagle pose, so we create the same wrap in the legs. Cross high up in the inner thighs and then wrap the leg around. So you can kickstand the left toes beside you or perhaps you wrap the left toes behind the calf. Stack the shoulders over the hips, so avoid that tendency to lean too far forward and then bend into that standing knee. So this is great for ankle mobility, for knees and hips. Slowly unravel here. Knee hugs in. As you exhale, release the arms. Bring the hands to the mat. Send your left leg up and back. Standing splits. Don't worry if your leg doesn't go as high as you might like. Focus here on keeping the standing hip over the ankle. So shift the weight into the ball mound and really stretching both legs straight and strong. Squaring the hips, hugging inner thighs together. With an inhale, stretch your spine halfway. And as you exhale, tap your left knee to your right calf. Bend deeply into that ankle. So really working the mobility in that ankle. Inhale, re-extend. Exhale, tap. Keep the weight in the ball mound of your right foot. Inhale, re-extend. This time as you exhale, tap. Bring your right shin to the mat on the outside of your, excuse me, left shin to the mat on the outside of your right foot. Creating this stable position now, transition to a seat. So your left shin comes underneath your right foot to the outside of that left knee. Square your sitting bones, come onto the very tips of the sitting bones. So you tilt the pelvis slightly forward. Right hand's hand comes down beside you, left arm reaches high. Create length in both sides of the waist. And as you exhale, rotate. Take left elbow to the outside of right knee. Once you're there, letting the crown of the head stack directly over shoulders and hips. So we have this nice long axis in the spine. Every inhale lifts the spine and every exhale rotates you deeper. Maybe send the gaze over the right shoulder. If you have an established practice and some <laughs> pretty serious mobility in the shoulders, you might start to reach for the bind. So that involves tucking your left arm through the legs, so through that little opening, and then wrapping the right arm around, taking the right wrist with the left fingertips. Finding that bind, if it's available, without rounding the spine or compromising your the axis, so that length in the spine. If you find that you really have to round and crunch into the body, maybe just releasing that bind for today. Slowly come out as you're ready, gaze forward, release the twist. So notice how that feels in your body now side to side. Coming into cow face pose next, so we stack the knees on top of each other, squeeze the inner thighs together so you create energy to the midline. Depending on the sensation, you can either have the heels close together or maybe walk them to the wide edges of your mat. We'll add the arms now. So we reach the left arm up, turn the palm to face behind you and bring that palm to the upper back. Then take your right arm out to the side, turn the thumb down. So you have internal rotation in that shoulder and begin to wrap it around, crawl your fingertips up the spine. Maybe your fingers connect today, maybe they do not. Wherever you are creating that inner magnetism. So you're drawing the elbows to the central axis of the spine rather than letting them flare out to the sides, really creating that integration. Big inhale breath here. And then maybe you start to fold forward any amount. Really create some intense sensation. So only go where you feel your, your intelligent edge, that edge that is challenging, but 
safe and supported. Slowly come out if you fold it forward. And then releasing the arms, shaking out the shoulders, maybe having, enjoying a few circles here. As you're ready, touch the hands forward. Step your right foot down between your hands. So we're going to unfold and come out the way we came in. So you start to crawl your hands forward, lift onto the back shin, press into your foot and lift the left leg high, standing splits. Slowly with control, lower the left toes to the earth. Press into your hands, step back, either vinyasa or downward dogs. For me, my body's calling for just a downward dog this time. Pedaling out the feet. We have our last round of forearm plank work here between sides, letting the knees touch down. Bring your forearms to the mat. Shoulders are over the elbows. Palms are nice and wide, pressing into finger pads. So externally rotating the shoulders. That means the heads of the arm bones rotate open and the palms stay pressing down. So it cre creates this stable alignment in the upper body. Come into forearm plank as you're ready. Hinge at the hips, begin to walk the feet towards the elbows. Find your dolphin pose with the heels lifted here. And then keep your left foot on the mat. Begin to extend your right leg any amount. As you do this, gaze forward between your forearms. Create a stable place for your eyes. And then begin to bend and lift that right leg a bit higher. As if you could transfer the weight from your left foot all the way into your arms. Wrap the inner thighs together in space. Square the hips. So we're really creating a lot of strength in this kind of flexible position in the shoulders and slowly touch down right foot to the mat. You can let your knees come down for a moment. That's a lot of work in the shoulders here. We'll come to the second side now as you're ready, lifting the hips, stay on the right foot, extend the left, left leg high. Move your gaze forward between your forearms and then begin to play with transferring the weight. So wrap the left thigh, inner thigh back in space. Shift weight onto the forearms, come onto the tippy tippy toes of your right foot, and then slowly release down. Maybe taking a breath here in a modified puppy pose, just letting the shoulders relax before we come into the second side. As you're ready, unfold in downward dog. So, really just creating that reset point that starting point in downward dog. And then as you're ready, inhale, left leg rises. Bend the knee, open the hip. On the exhale, take that knee out and around, touch the left arm and open back up, inhale. Keep the shoulder square, exhale, come forward, tap. Inhale, re-extend. This time as you exhale, come forward, maybe create a shelf for that left leg. Bend the elbows and the heart forward. You might let your right leg float. <laughs> Slowly coming out, pressing that left leg up and back, squaring hips, squaring shoulders. And exhale, step your left foot through between your hands. Back heel turns flat. Inhale, warrior one. This time, cross the right arm under left for eagle arms. Let the shoulders stay nice and relaxed. Hug the elbows, the forearms, the palms, the wrists into the midline, and then broaden the inner armpits, the inner chest apart. Take your thumbs to your forehead. Lift your gaze up. Lift the arms up. Find a gentle back bend. And then from deep in the low belly, coil in. Start to shift your weight forward. Stretch your fingertips forward, come onto the ball of the back foot. And then slowly, with strength in that front leg, lift the back leg high. Wrap the inner right thigh up in space. Hug right knee into chest here, transitioning to eagle pose. So create that mirror action in the legs that you have in the arms. Wrap the right leg around. Maybe you kickstand the right foot, or maybe it wraps the left calf. Find your balance here. Sink your weight back and down. So shoulders are directly over the hips. Belly is hugging to spine. 
Notice your balance. If it wavers, can you come back in by creating more activation to that central axis, your line of balance, of stability. Last big breath here. And then slowly unfold, unravel. Right knee hugs into chest. Start to release the hands, touch the hands down, come into standing splits. So right leg extends up and back. Again, don't worry if this isn't your fullest expression. Just let the hips square. Let the weight be in the ball mound of that left foot. On your next inhale, halfway lift your spine. And on the exhale, tap your right knee to left calf. Bend deeply into that left ankle. Inhale, re-extend. Open in both directions. And exhale, curl in. So really working that range in the supporting ankle and tap. Last one here, big inhale. And as you exhale, slowly come through that tap. Take your shin to the outside of the left foot. So right shin comes down and then help yourself down to a seat. So create that support however you need it all the way through. Lift your spine up tall, come onto the front of your sitting bone. So slight forward tilt in the pelvis. Left hand beside you, right arm reaches up. Big inhale and exhale, rotate. Take the right elbow to the outside of left knee. You can have the hands to heart here. Your goal is to keep the crown, the heart, and the hips in one line. So avoid rounding back or coming too far forward. Creating this twist here, maybe gazing over left shoulder. And if you have it, if you'd like to explore the bind again on this side, wrap that front arm, that left arm through. Reach for the right, excuse me, right arm through, reach for the left wrist. Sometimes left and right get a bit fuzzy when the body is twisted. So feel, even though the shoulders are internally rotating, can you broaden across the chest? Last big breath here. And slowly release the clasp if you have it. Gaze forward and without urgency, letting the twist go. Some shoulder circles here, really feeling the spine even out. Then we start to stack the knees and the thighs in the middle. Draw the inner thighs to the center. So really feel that, just like we had an eagle, that squeeze to the midline to create some some strength there. Coming into cow face pose now on this side. So the right arm reaches up, turn the palm to face behind you and bring that hand to the back of the heart. Wrap the inner upper arm bone toward your ear. So you're hugging the elbow in, left arm reaches out to the side, left thumb turns down, internal rotation. And then we crawl the fingertips up. Maybe they connect, maybe they don't. If you have the bind, press the back of your head into your top arm and lengthen up through the spine. Big inhale here. And any amount you might choose to fold forward over the legs. Some deep sensation here. And then slowly unfold, unravel. Let the shoulders go, create some big circles here. And then we're going to come out again the way we came in. So step your left foot out in front of you. Begin to walk, crawl your hands forward. Come onto the right shin through standing splits. That right leg extends. And then slowly touch the toes down behind you. Step into downward dog. Lowering onto the knees now for a breath. Walk the hands out into puppy pose. So we're starting to make our way back down to the mat. We have one more back bend, shoulder opener to explore. So as you're ready, from puppy coming onto the belly. Rest your forehead on your hands, start to bend your knees. Hug the inner knees into the midline so you feel that activation in the inner thighs. And really relax the neck so feel the shoulders kind of soften away from the ears. As you're you're ready, reach your hands for the outer edges or inner edges of your feet, ankles, wherever they touch. And once again, reconnect to the axis along the center. So inner thighs, inner knees, hug in. 
roll the shoulders open, feel external rotation, and then we'll come into bow pose. So you press the feet into hands, hands into feet with an inhale. Let the head hang heavy, so relaxing the neck and shoulders. And then equal and opposite action. So you're hugging the hands into feet, the feet into hands, and the resulting <laughs> force is to lift you up. Last big breath here. And slowly release. Pillow your hands. Sway your hips from side to side. Without urgency from here, we'll extend the arms long. Start to roll onto your back. So let the knees stay deeply bent. We'll enjoy bridge pose here just to kind of create that space across the front line of the body before we unwind. So as you're ready, press the backs of the arms into the mat, hug your elbows in close. So point your fingers up first, create that arc in the back of the heart, and then slowly begin to lift the hips. So you might stay here, you might start to crawl the arms underneath, maybe you clasp the hands together, press the pinky side of the hand into the mat. Or if it's available, you can start to reach your hands for your ankles. So much like we just did in bow pose, you can create that clasp here if it feels good for you. So keeping the back of the neck neutral, I'm going to opt for the clasp here. Release your bind, your clasp if you have it, and slowly lower the hips to the mat. So let your spine come back to neutral first. There might be this tendency to want to hug your knees into your chest, but let your, your spine kind of relax and let that residual sensation dissolve. As we do that, let your arms come out to a cactus shape. Feel some space across the chest. And then press your elbows into the mat so you feel maybe a lift behind the heart. From here, bring your hands behind your shoulders. This time you can let the elbows kind of splay out wide wherever they need to go. Press your shoulder blades onto your hands. And then begin to extend the legs out long. And notice what happens as you try to anchor the shoulders and the elbows to the mat. Maybe your lower back lifts off the mat to kind of make up for any gaps in mobility. So instead, can you keep the action in the upper body and then lower the base of the spine to the mat? So you're drawing hip points and low ribs together, kind of flattening the curve in the low back just for a moment to create that space in the upper back. As you're ready, release the hands. Come onto your right side and let your hips stack. So one on top of the other, knees are stacked, sort of like in this resting position. Then let your palms touch together, stretch your arms out long. And we're coming into our spinal twist from this position to give it a focus in the chest and shoulders. So keeping the legs as they are, just begin to open that left arm out and around to the side. If you can, maybe anchoring the knees down with your right hand finding a full spinal twist here. So releasing the weight of your left arm to gravity, just creating that spaciousness. Last big breath here. And with some tone in the low belly, slowly come through center. You can keep your left shoulder down and just start to roll onto your left side. So same setup here, stacking the hips, stacking the knees. We'll start with the shoulders stacked, press your palms together, and then keep your left arm as it is, begin to open the right arm out to the side, gaze over your right fingertips. So you feel this deep twist in the low spine, releasing a lot of the work from today. You might let your eyes soften closed and relax any control that you still have over the breath. Let it flow naturally, freely. And 
As you're ready, slowly coming back through center. This time you can give yourself that big squeeze, hug the knees into chest. Releasing the legs down now. We'll enjoy a few minutes of rest in Shavasana. So finding your most comfortable position here, whether that's legs up the wall, maybe you have knees knocked in, maybe you have the knees wide apart, the soles of the feet touching. If it feels okay, let your hands land on your body wherever they may. Just feel that circuitry as you close the energy inward and kind of let your body receive everything that you've stirred up through your practice. With the eyelids heavy now, feel that redirection of your attention inward. Listening for whatever rises to the surface. Using this inner spring season to create space for growth, to open, to expand beyond what you thought was possible. So nurture that essence here, that quality of radiance, of kind of gathering all that you've been cultivating through the winter season and now letting it flourish, letting it come to life. And I hope that you will stay in this position, in this resting place as long as you can, as long as you need, as long as you like. And when you are ready, make the journey back up to a seat so it can be some slow movement on your back first, maybe windshield wiper, the knees, Wiggle fingers and toes. Stretch out your jaw, your face, your forehead. And then without any urgency at all, transitioning to your comfortable seat. We'll close our practice together, letting one hand find your heart, one hand find your belly. And just giving yourself a few moments to observe the energy circulating, anything that has shifted or changed for you. Just really celebrate that, acknowledge that here, honor that here. And I want to take this moment to thank you for moving your body with me and for being a part of this collective of women who move by the moon. <laughs> 